Hello, how are we going? Alright, folks, my, uh, my, uh, my old bicep's been um, completely reattached, eh? All good, all successful in that. Look, um, what have we got to chat about? The, uh, the, uh, the um, newest member of the uh, YouTube tunneling fraternity, uh, <laughs> Shrubbery JSC, eh? Go and, go and check him out. Um, he's a uh, guy in diagonally, so a little bit different to everyone else, um, rather than dropping straight down with a shaft. A bit of shafts that we've come to talk about today, isn't it? I, um, uh, Grey Man put up a video and asked a couple of questions. Like, you know, I'm, I'm no expert, but I've, uh, I've had my nose in the books for a few years now, um, so I'll do my best to. Uh, to answer them, um, firstly, I'll, I pointed him in the direction of uh, Fred Dibner's videos just before. God bless his socks, the Lord took him up to heaven to become an angel, um, and he was uh, he was sinking a mine shaft in his back garden, had the had the pit wheel assembled, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Fucking, I think it's steam engine powering it, and um, yeah, really, uh, really. Uh, really getting into the swing of doing up his own premises and just getting problems with the council and sending his beautiful man his drawings Fred's drawings were the, I don't know he's a scruffy old bastard isn't he <laughs> but then he he, he show, shows the camera the drawings that he's done and they're, they're like the most most meticulously uh, beautiful drawings um, I think he was a uh, went to college and did art, uh, if I remember from the really early episodes, whatever, it's by the by. Uh, I, I've, you know, I've had a little look again at them last night and, and kind of realised that it's hard to pay attention to his, um, his shaft uh, instructions, or they weren't really instructions, it was you know, entertainment for the cameras, isn't it? So uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, explain the method he was using for, for lining his shaft with brick, which is you know the, the common method. Um, that everyone was doing in their minds where they wanted mines to last a long time or chimney vents in uh, in tunnels for steam trains because you know that was, that was a big thing in it um, you know if you want to if you want to line a line a shaft of brick and you need to anchor it to the to the shaft and you haven't you haven't finished going down yet you want to line it as you go um, and I thought that would be useful for for grey man a couple of reasons because um, if he makes it look like brick yeah and uh, and he has to flog his house or anything like what's what's to say it hasn't been there since the war? <laughs> you know, like if it looks if it looks uh, if it looks seventy year old or something, as long as you use the right brick and not metric brick, you could you could probably pull that off, couldn't you? Um, right. So, all right. So that's the the start of your digging. You you figured out where where you're digging a your hole. Obviously, um, Grey Man's got a lot further than this, but this is this is you know the start of a hole. Yeah. Uh, round or square? I mean, normally normally. Normally the round, like obviously Grey Man's got a, a square hole. I don't think it matters that much. Not not the sizes that, that he's at, and his his soil's fairly uh, fairly dense and well packed, isn't it? But um, with a with a round shaft, you'd have a a great big round iron ring. No reason for it to be iron, really. Uh, it could be it could be wood, I suppose. And that's got eyelets on the inside of that that donut shape, yeah. So with that with that ring, put the, the ring there, and then support it from above with chain or cable or rope or whatever. It can't be anything too stretchy, mind. So yeah, probably chain or cable, and then uh, and then sit a course of brick with only the ends being buttered. Yeah, so you're not you're not uh, putting water between the brick and the uh, and the donut. Uh, you're just bonding the bricks to each to its neighbour, and then when you've gone round one course like that, they drive iron spikes. Sometimes they used uh, slate wedges and that um, into the uh, into the into the rock or soil or whatever you whatever you're sinking your shaft through, and then you put a uh, then you put a mortar bed for the next uh, for the next course of bricks to sit on, yeah. So uh, that that mortar bed is um, including your spikes or slate or whatever you've used, yeah. 
and then you put your coarser bricks. So you're you're building up in sort of a, and then another another course of bricks tell you at the top, and um, you know you've got you've got three courses of brick then, and once that's gone off, uh, you can start digging again, and um, and what dig out another another 18 inches or whatever, drop the uh, drop the ring down. And uh, start all over again, isn't it? So you put your put your course at the bottom again, just with butter on the ends. Yeah. Then uh, drive your spikes, a slate or whatever, into the walls. Then uh, then mortar, proper mortar bed on that one, and another course of bricks more mortar, another course of bricks until you've met the uh, unbattered bricks that you started on the first time, yeah? And you know, some curve. Uh, Fred got really far of his, like he was, uh, he was quite far down. He, uh, well, he was, his house is on a on a big hill, isn't it? And he, he was sinking the shaft and then, then gonna tunnel out sideways. And the whole idea was he was gonna have a sort of never ending loop. So he'd, uh, he'd it, as a display, he'd pull up the um, pull up the buckets of you know um, fake mining material, load them into carts, send them down the hill, and then come back to the to the bottom of his uh, shaft where he'd hoist them up again. So that uh, you know when people came to visit him, they'd just see this continual loop of the same same muck barrows of uh, of um, you know muck, muck going through tails or whatever, going through going through his uh, like make believe mine um, on an endless loop sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's how they that's how they used to do it, and I, you know, yeah, like I say, the benefits of this is um, it looks it looks old, didn't it? Like you could, you could maybe even blag the fact that it was there, you know, when you when you got your house or something. But uh, yeah, the other the other benefit, obviously, with, with brick and you know, like say bags of ready mixed mortar, like it's easy to move through a house or whatever. If uh, if you've got no uh, no access, you can't, you know. You can't drive a pallet full of blocks up to the where you're working, can you? Maybe, uh, maybe you can only bring uh, 40 bricks in at a time and a, a couple of bags of uh, a couple of bags of dust, and uh, that would be a, a really uh, convenient, not necessarily the quickest way, but a definitely convenient way. Like if you're going to do it with uh, concrete up the sides, I, I don't know. You'd, uh, you'd either be working in buckets or uh, out of a mixer in your back garden, and uh, yeah. I don't, know. I don't know. It sounds a bit like a nightmare to me. Um, yeah, that's that's it. That was the uh, the old method of um, bricking bricking the shaft up before you finish digging your shaft. Yeah. The other thing he was talking about was uh, was depth and um, yeah, it's not it's not all right. Huge amounts of resources for uh, for amateur tunneling. <laughs> Funnily enough, like it's not it's not the most popular pastime, but um, what I found the material that I could get my hands on, uh, they were talking about um, you yeah, know obviously if you've got a structure like Dale's where he's um, working underneath a concrete slab, you're not really got to worry about supporting the soil because there's there's no there's no soil above you, is there? Like the same with same with old Fursey. I think Fursey put a little sprinkling of a. Uh, of topsoil back on top of his concrete structure, um, he, he made a metal box, um, welded rebar to the outside, poured a load of concrete in, and he's just got a you know six inches of topsoil to so that the grass will actually grow there, isn't it? Um, Great man like Colin Furs is quite lucky. I think they're both on the top of a hill, so they've got very little. Uh, they got you know they're, they're nowhere near a water table, are they? Um, but what? But yeah, if you if you are if you are going down, and you're not you're not working underneath a concrete slab, and you've uh, depth depth is quite an important thing. And um, uh, if you're two times the width of your room, then you're supporting like if there's two times the width of your room above your head, then you're supporting less soil than if you're one times the width of your room above your head. Yeah. Um, 
put some Lego bricks out so we could do a demonstration. <laughs> right. So let's try and let's try and demonstrate this. Let's try and demonstrate. So the idea is, let's yeah, see if you got a. Uh, my hands hands working and everything, but it's still a still a wee bit sore. There's directions it doesn't want to go in, you know. The, the, the physio said I had to <laughs> I had to force myself. Oh, the best people in the planet, aren't they, old um, old physios? Best people in the world. Anyway, um, so that's a uh, obviously the the soil above your above your bunker. And it's very unstable at the minute, yeah. Just the slightest bit of pressure in the middle, which obviously you'd get from the, the mass of the soil, wouldn't you? And it, um, it wants to wants to all fall apart. But you know, uh, if you if you're twice the depth, you know, the soil gets a lot more strength from leaning in on itself, and uh, a it's a lot harder to push this one down, yeah. Um, Because the ones on the side are, are leaning into it and sort of uh, holding it all up, and that's a uh, that's from what I understood the uh, the reason two times the width above your head is important. Yeah. So if you're having a, a six foot wide chamber, which I think is the, the technical room for, the technical term for a, a room in your bunker, um, then you really want twelve foot above your head. So it becomes mutually supportive, and the other thing with that is, um, you obviously uh, you're supporting a triangle. Once you're down to that depth, you're supporting a, a triangle of um, let's say, say that's your ah, righty then. So here's your here's your your chamber, yeah. Uh, that's a little bit out of scale here, aren't we? Let's uh, let's make it realistic. Let's draw it to scale. Yeah. Um, so let uh, with a with a flat roof. Um, you know, I'm obviously going with a, a flat roof or ceiling, whatever you want to call it. Uh, in my in my passageways, my passageways of a. <laughs> but I, I want to do a. Um, yeah, but my passageways are only five foot five foot wide. Yeah. Um, it is my intention to, to go for a, a vaulted ceiling, you know, a little way off, but a vaulted ceiling in my rooms. Um, and it is a good reason for that. It, it, so, like, uh, the triangle above is what you're, the triangle of soil above the flat roof is what you're supporting, and everything above that triangle is a. Uh, Pushing in on itself like those Lego bricks, uh, with the force that prevents it from coming down. Yeah, does that make sense? Uh, so, uh, so the flat roof is basically holding a triangle up to 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 make sure what's above that triangle pushes itself in the right direction. Which is why uh, why people use the the vaulted ceilings. Yeah, um, you know. Rounds a, a far better shape because, uh, you know, if you've got a, an arch like that, which your, your roof is shaped as, um, then you you've hardly got to support anything. All you're all you're really doing, you're you're not supporting anything. You're just maintaining the shape of things so that it it supports itself. Yeah. So why the uh, the arch is arch is better and. Um, you know, the magical thing about the arch, obviously, is it puts everything in compression, so you can you can use brick for that, can't you? Um, no, that's it. Those are just my thoughts. Um, so, yeah, he was uh, he was talking about using precast flooring, uh, precast frog concrete frog feet, <laughs> which would be fine. Let, let, let's face it, if uh, if he uses precast concrete flooring. Uh, that will be uh, plenty strong enough, even if he's, um, you know, at a much shallower depth, and he is actually supporting all that soil above him. Um, you know, that 
it'll take many tons, won't it? Uh, and there's not many tons of soil in a, in a you know, if you think of a, an 18 inch wide plank of um, the precast flooring, uh, you know, you're only talking about the column of earth above that. So that's uh, 400 mil, and let's say he's, uh, he goes 600 deep at the minute. How much soil is that? I don't know, you'd be easy, <laughs> easy to calculate it, wouldn't you? Like you're only trying to calculate the the column of soil on that specific plank, aren't you? Uh, and I think um, you have to find out that you know what sort of loads they're meant for. But I, I think that'd be plenty strong enough. So if you're if you're gonna use that flooring, then you probably don't have to worry about being twice the width of your room deep. Because you know, a usable space, let's say six foot wide, it means a uh, total total depth is eighteen foot, isn't it? Yeah, which, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, like it's, uh, those last uh, last last episodes of Fred Dimner, are, you know, worth a worth a watch for anyone, just because he's a just because he's an amazing bloke, isn't he, old uh, old Dimner? Um, God bless his socks, and uh, that's it. It's meant to be a sunny day today, hence the string vest. I'm gonna go and sit with uh, Lister, scrape some paint off, and drink a couple of beers. <laughs> I'll catch you all again soon. Cheers. Bye bye.